outreach to Latino voter outreach. In the Miami Fort Lauderdale media market alone, the Trump campaign has outspent Biden by about $4 million using much of the money on Spanish language ads, according to Politico. With me now is Andrea Mercado. She's the executive director of the Florida Majority. And Raymond Palter is a Florida strategist. Thanks for joining me. It's fun to actually have both of you here because we've worked with together on Florida, Florida, Florida. Andrea, I want to start with you. I know that there's been a lot of criticism on the polls coming out on Biden with Latino voters. Can you break it down a little bit for us? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, Florida is obviously a very large state, 23 million people, over 6 million Latinos in the state. And it's a really diverse, it's not a secret that it's a very diverse Latino population. Um, Cuban electorate uh, tends to vote more conservative, tends to vote Republican. But our demographics are shifting and there's a growing Puerto Rican population, Mexican population, South American um, population. So our electorate is changing. And time and time again, elections in Florida come down to less than 1%. Um, but we're not going to analyze our way to victory on election night. What I'm most interested in is how are we talking to voters? How are we engaging voters? New Florida Majority and the Florida for All Coalition called over a million Floridians last week. And the week before, we had over um, we had volunteers call over 40,000 Floridians uh, today. Um, and what Latinos want to hear is where do uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris stand on the issues that uh, matter to us most in a state that's been ravaged by the coronavirus pandemic, um, where thousands have lost their lives, millions have um, lost their jobs, uh, biz small businesses are struggling. Um, we want to know where jo Joe Biden and Kamala Harris stand and how they're going to help um, struggling families and, and small businesses. Raymond, so one of the conversations that we have had offline is the importance of contacting all the voters. Oftentimes, there's a Democratic strategy, and the Republican strategy, quite frankly, is that you just contact enough voters to put you over the top. But I want your take on the Doug Jones strategy that he called all the voters and he shockingly won. What do you see of that as a tactic in Florida? Yeah, I think it's really important. And Andrea, wonderful colleague of mine in the state, talked about how diverse the electorate is. It is hard to organize a progressive coalition in Florida, as hard as it is to organize that coalition nationally. Um, as Andrea mentioned, there is a ton of diversity, not just along ethnic lines, but racial lines and regional diversity. Um, and that means you have to show up year round and in every corner of our state with seven media markets. That means seven different media strategies, seven different radio strategies, seven different surrogate strategies. And it's true. Um, Democrats and progressives have to talk to every single voter. It's why organizations like New Florida Majority and the over 40 organizations who are working to elect Joe Biden um, are really, really important because they're in these communities 24 uh, seven. What Joe Biden can't do, uh, what the campaign can't count on, to be perfectly honest, uh, is just him. This is about the collective. This is about the progressive family coming together. Uh, there are only 50 plus days, 50 days to go in this election. He can't do it all with 67 counties in Florida. Uh, he has got to count on organizations who have been with him, organizations who want nothing more than Donald Trump out of the White House um, to come uh, to call voters, uh, like Andrea is talking about, marshalling all resources uh, to text, to call, uh, to have digital ads, radio ads, uh, and as many in-person, uh, safe, but in-person events as possible. And Andrea, one of the criticisms that we're hearing out of the campaign is that the idea of socialism has really stuck with the Democrats. And one of the analysis that we've made, at least at Voto Latino, it's because the Trump campaign has been talking to Latino voters in Florida specifically on digital platforms that Raymond mentioned, on Facebook and on Instagram, specifically talking about the dangers of socialism, that it was the reason why people fled Cuba and why they've left uh, Venezuela. What can the Biden campaign do to counteract these messages so that we can all agree that folks left socialism and, Q and they left uh, communism? And you could also say democracies in Latin America, not because of the structure of the government, but because of the corruption that was underpinning much of this government. What can the Democrats do specifically to go combat this, this narrative? Mm -hmm. Well, Trump can't win um, the White House without Florida, and Biden can't win Florida without Latinos. 
Um, and a recent Equis poll of over 1,000 Floridians across the state um, showed that what Floridians really most want is to where Joe Biden stands. And I think the most important thing that the Biden campaign can do is educate Floridians about um, how Joe Biden will tackle the climate crisis and protect our beaches that he'll listen to public health experts and support um, struggling families and, and small businesses, um, and that he'll listen to grassroots movements um, to advance uh, racial justice. So I think the most important thing to counteract the socialism messaging that the Donald Trump campaign is, is aggressively going in on is to just really speak about what does Joe Biden stand for? Um, that you know all of us deserve an opportunity to go to college without plunging into debt. Um, it, I think if we can't fall into the trap and take the bait. Um, Joe Biden really needs to just talk about the policies. Um, and I think that's what we're hearing um, on the that's what we're hearing on the phones. That's what we're hearing on social media when we're out there talking to Latino and African-American voters across the state. Um, that's the question. And Raymond, this does we get a significant bump because Kamala Harris is now on the ticket. Yeah, I think so. Um, but I wouldn't rely on that. Uh, 50 days is a lifetime. Um, and one thing we're already seeing, and we've talked about this before, is the um, although uh, Senator Harris presents uh, an amazing opportunity for uh, Vice President Biden to reintroduce himself specifically to Caribbean voters and black voters, um, it also gives Republicans the opportunity to continue to create division between black voters and Hispanic voters. Um, it's something that we've seen, as Andrea said, from our friends at Becky's Labs, um, and something we're seeing show up specifically in the digital space, um, the pitting of black and brown voters uh, against each other. And so um, I think the surrogate operation is critical. Uh, I'm so happy uh, and how well the trip went for Senator Harris when she came down to Miami. Uh, they're going to have to continue to do that. I want to impress upon what Andrea said. Trump cannot win this election uh, without Florida. And that's why you see so much attention here. That's why you're going to see more visits here. Uh, only one president uh, has ever been successful. When one president has actually walked into the White House uh, since the 1960s without Florida. Uh, Trump would have to win New York uh, to win. Uh, I'm being born and raised in New York. That, that's not <laughs> happening. So um, he's, he's got to get Florida. We cannot cede it to him. And that's why you've seen so much attention paid to it. Andrea and Raymond.